guys, Daryl Shergan, Quest for Vape. Today I'm going to do a review on the Heracles RTA version 2 from Sense. This is the modified version over the V1, which I like just fine. I vape it all the time. This is the V2 with improved airflow and a wider wicking slot, but we're going to do a review on this. I'm also going to do a wicking tutorial. The company asked me to do a wicking tutorial because there wasn't much out there on YouTube showing people how to specifically wick this. You can do it however you want, but I'm going to show you how to wick this for optimal flavor, optimal vaping. Um, and with this method, you can vape up to 100 to 150 watts easily, which I'll do in the video. I'm enjoying this RTA very much. I was enjoying the version one. Now I have the version two. I'm also doing a giveaway. One lucky winner will win this stainless steel version two RTA, which I'm going to build on and wick on in this tutorial. And I'm also gonna use some M-Turk Alien Clapton coils for this. There you go, this is from M-Turk on Instagram. He's a famous coil builder, does amazing work, and um, that's a $20 set of coils that I bought at Vapor Slam when I saw M-Turk last weekend. These are a 0.11 ohm coil set, so if you're not prepared to vape that low, you don't have a good regulated mod to handle that power, these are going to take about 80 to 100 watts to vape nicely, but you're going to get an incredible flavor experience. I'm going to be using my Coil Master Coil Build Kit. I'm going to be using Cotton Bacon for this wicking tutorial just because I find it's the easiest cotton I have on hand, but you can use any cotton you like, and we'll talk about that in the tutorial. If, if you don't like long videos, please tune into another channel. I don't want to hear it. Okay, This is meant for people who are struggling with getting the best flavor, getting the best vape on this product and other products like it. And I'm gonna show you how I am able to maximize flavor and vapor production on an RTA. And you can apply the same technique to any RTA. Thank you very much for watching. And here we go down for a close up look. This is the packaging for the Heracles version two. It's the same as most of the things I've seen from Heracles. They come in this box, take off this paper sleeve, and here we have the stainless steel. Here we have the black version, which I've been using. This is the one I will be giving away with a build in it. This is the RTA with two air flows. And I'll show you a comparison on the version one with four air flows. Why the difference, why the change, We'll talk about that. Okay, here's information. You can read their marketing stuff. This is what comes in the packaging. Replacement Pyrex glass tube, 510 drip tip adapter, two bunches of O-rings, spare parts, screws, a screwdriver, Allen key, copper pin. All right, here's an authenticity sticker. You can, you, you scratch off this portion and then you check that code. Here's the information on SenseTech and Sigrate. So opening this up, you peel a sticker off like this one here. You peel that sticker off. Here's the tank inside. We'll take a closer look at this in a moment. It has top fill, has a proprietary drip tip, but there's an adapter you can screw on there and use your own. It has Juice control, which you absolutely must use or you're in trouble. And four airflow slots, similar to the Smoke TFV4 airflow. Okay, let's look at what else comes in this packaging. Nice dense foam, keeps that protected in transportation. Here we have a warning. What are these saying here? Never use a short or flat 510 connection on any hybrid or hybrid style device. If unsure whether this pertains to your particular setup, do not assemble and use. Always use proper precautions and handling. I like that. That's nice. What they're talking about is don't use this tank on a hybrid mech mod because 
this doesn't stick out far enough. And you're not supposed to use these things on Mac mods anyway. Use it on a regulated device. That way you can find where you want your wattage for vaping. I also want to show you instructions are on this inside flap here. So you can read that. Six milliliter capacity. The colors it comes in right now are stainless steel and black. Rose gold I haven't seen. That'll be nice. Okay. Here are some more basic information. Height, width. The packaging is shaped to hold the glass tube with this. This is a spare glass sleeve and this parts tube. Kind of nice. In here, we have a bunch of goodies. All right, that's it. Bunch of O-rings, gaskets, O-rings, things like that, replacements. Whole mess of them. You got your big, fat, chunky blue flathead screwdriver. You've got a Phillips. You've got a Allen wrench tool, as well as a spare copper 510 pin, some extra post screws, looks like three of them, and a drip tip adapter. So let's take this apart. Here's your drip tip, unscrews, here's your top fill, and what's nice is it's got this inset cut texturing over here so you can grab that and then the logo, the Sense logo there, is engraved, so that gives you some purchase. Decent top fill, screw on, screw off, decently. Okay, we got some nice wide fill holes, some nice clean threading here, four turns of threading and a silicon seal, which we have replacements for. Okay, so that's how you top fill it. Everything threads fine. Okay, let's, let's look down here. Here's your juice flow control. It's very important, very wide juice flow slots. It's very important to keep this closed when you're filling the top fill. If you leave that open, then this is going to flood out. It's not the Heracles' fault if you do that. It's your fault. So this is the deck. So this is the deck, the version 2 and the version 1. The main difference is two big airflow holes here, four airflow holes here two big wicking slots. Look at these massive slots over here. And this is where your wicks go. Down in here, down in here. They share the same slot. In this version one, you had four separate wicking slots here, here, there, and there. I didn't have any problem whatsoever Building this, wicking this, vaping this, none whatsoever. It didn't leak. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I was able to get an awesome vape from this RTA. And as you see, I have some very nice alien Claptons in here. I've been vaping this since uh, the middle of May. I picked this up. I didn't have any problem with the version 1. I liked it a lot. I like the way the airflow works. I like the way the wicking slots are located. I like everything about it. But they went ahead and improved it. People complained that uh, you didn't need airflow underneath these posts. And then, and then that, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe they had problems with juice flooding down through those airflow holes. I didn't have that problem. But I'll show you how I wick it. And you can wick this the same exact way. So let's go ahead and 
point some things out. These posts, you can position them if you want. You can, especially this one, you can loosen up from below the 510 and you can reposition that, that post if you want, maybe to be rotate about that pin there if you want that post here for some reason. And then you can do some suspension coils around. But anyway, what we're going to do is build a dual coil, one over each airflow, and then we're going to wick it, joining the wicks together down in this um, wide trench here. Let me show you this one I already have built out. And I'll show you how I, how I did. It's going to be yucky. It's going to be wet. It's going to be gross because I've been vaping on this. Ew, look at that. I need to re-wick. Oh, that's from a good five to six days. Yeah. You can see how I wicked it right down in that common wicking slot there. Okay, that's the finished result. And this one's going to get a good rebuild, rewick a little later. For the purpose of this review, I will be using. this tank that I'm going to give away. Somebody's going to get a very, very nice build by M. Turk. These are his alien Claptons. Can you see those gorgeous alien wavy pattern? M. Turk on Instagram, Nichrome 80. Triple strand, triple core maybe? No, I don't know what 32736 means. Could be that they have a triple core of 27 gauge. Well, don't ask me. All I could tell you is these things are beautiful. And you're going to get a set of those installed in your new RTA. Heading right into the build. I highly recommend using Clapton's for the flavor. This RTA will reward you with an amazing flavor vape, so it's worth it. Get the best Claptons you can find. You can also use pre-made strands. That's what I have in my other one. I think it's just spools that I buy of pre-made Clapton. This deck is perfect. See how easy these nice aliens fit. One on the upper side, one on the lower side. There we go. MTurk does a really nice job with these. I gotta say, I can't complain. I've always been very happy with MTurk's coils. If you clean them, Often, these things will last you for months. If you're going to leave your RTA alone for a little while with this build in it, and you're not going to be vaping it for a while, take the cotton out, clean them off, pulse them a few times. Okay, Don't, don't leave them sitting there full of juice. All right, the only thing I, I don't love about this deck for wide frame staple Clapton's like that is it twists them a little bit. See how there's a little half a bend there because the screw kind of pushed that up and down. Can't be helped. It's not the worst thing in the world. It'll vape just fine. I just, um, that's why the goon style 
vice-like clamp is better for a wide Clapton like this, but it's doing fine. It's doing just fine in this deck. Okay, some people like to put an angle. I prefer them straight like that. And there we go. We've got one installed. The two posts, the two post deck design makes it really easy to build on. Really easy to just install a set of coils. No problem getting to those legs to clip them just a pleasure to to build on this see how it twisted that so be aware that's fine it's not going to change the way it vapes Okay, so some things that we're looking for. We want the coil centered over the airflow. We don't want the coil sticking out over the deck or even close to it. We want both coils the same height above the deck, meaning this distance should be the same on both sides. And you don't want your coils above the height of these posts. Okay, let's go ahead and pulse it. These are homing out to exactly 0.11, just like they say they would. This side seems to heat faster than the other. You can pinch them together if you like. I prefer them spaced, and I'll show you how I do that in a moment. Slightly spaced. Just like this. A little bit of a gap. That's all I'm looking for. I find it wicks the juice a little bit more evenly and thoroughly, especially in an RTA, where you can't open this up, mess with it after it's in. better.
much more evenly. Much more. Ah. That whole deck is hot. That whole deck is very hot. Not hot enough to burn, but that's hot. So just realize that when you are heating up these coils. Whenever possible, I always rinse my coils, even on brand new coils. So there you go. That's the MTurk build. Yes, one side is heating up a little bit quicker than the other. Probably this leg here is a little longer. But want to fix that? Okay. Could fix it. I put my finger there so that I don't get shards of wire shooting up at my eye. Now let's see how it heats up. And by the way, much better tool. See how it heats up now. Good enough for me. Okay, we ready for wicking tutorial. The magic for wicking these RTAs is spending some time prepping your cotton. This happens to be cotton bacon, but it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you got. You could use kendo, you can use uh, sheets, organic cotton sheets. If you do, I would recommend taking the outer dense, thick layers off those and, and use more cotton. Use that wispy inner portion between those two dense sheets. All right, so there. You're going to pull this apart till it's very wispy, kind of resembles that stuff that you buy and you, you spread around your bushes and around your house around Halloween. Okay, roll this up. I don't even care if it's consistent. I really don't. I mean, you do want a relative consistency to it, but that's it. That's probably even too much. That's all you need. Doesn't look like much, does it? I'm not trying to make it neat. I don't care if these fibers are sticking out. I'm not trying to fold laundry over here. I'm trying to vape. it should really easily go through this coil. If I have to pull on that, I did something wrong. All right. Okay, see how easily it's in there? We're only going down into there. Cut it on an angle. That's it. That's my wick. One side done. Right. Let's 
get the other side. This is enough cotton to do both sides. You don't need to densely fill all the space in here with cotton. You only need to block this channel. You only need to block this channel. That's it from the top. You don't need it coming out the bottom. You just need enough cotton in there to keep the juice from rolling through and flooding. That's it. Less is more. This has to be fluffy so it can absorb and wick. If it's not fluffy, you're going to lose flavor. That's too long. I'll show you. Let me pull this through a little so I'll show you what we do with wicks that are too long. I'm cutting it at an angle. I see a lot of people trying to take the whole entire wick and stuff it down into there. That's, that's wrong. That's a mistake. It's a big mistake to try and get all that. Cut it at an angle. You're missing the concept. The concept here is to get just enough of this wispy cotton in there to block the juice. Just like that. That's it. Juice is not going to flood this. Alright. That's enough cotton fiber right there. That's plenty. That right there is plenty. When it gets heated up, it's going to swell. It's going to expand. It'll fill that slot. It'll keep you from flooding. If you try and pack too much in there, you're just going to choke and mute the flavor. So, there we go. And there we go. The whole entire wick doesn't need to go down in there. It's, it's all right to have some fluffies up top. Perfectly all right to have some fluffies up top. Got it? That's how you wick it. This should very, very easily fit into the chamber here. If you have to press that, you blew it. If that compresses that cotton, you're not going to get good flavor. You can even give it a haircut. A little bit of a haircut. Cut that bush. That Don King bush. There we go. As far as I am concerned, this right here is well wicked. That's all you need. Make sure these are not compressed. All right. See on this one, there's, there's excess cotton. It's better to cut that off than to try and neaten it up and do something with it. It's better to cut off that excess. Yeah. And they're sharing the same slot. This big mass, that's fine. You know, make sure it's evenly distributed across there. Good.
something's catching. And there is your sense, Heracles, version 2, built and wicked, ready to go. Now, whoever wins this, all you have to do is close off that juice flow control. You do that like this. Close off that juice flow control. Close off that airflow control. Open up that top fill. Fill it. And vape on it. However, but here you go. And that's going back in the box. Here's the close-up look. Some winner gets that. Congratulations. And thank you very much. To Mr. M. Turk, I believe it's Mike. There we go. That's the giveaway. Let's talk about routine maintenance on RTAs. Earlier in this video, you saw a close up of my black version of the Heracles V2, and the coils were gunky and nasty, so they needed to be re wicked. The build is still good. I broke the tank down. I cleaned it out. I washed it, thoroughly rinsed it. It's got some droplets of water. Those will dry in a few minutes. Let's take a look at what we do to clean this ugly mess up. Water won't get that off. You have to pulse these. You also have to have a device that will fire down to a point one one. So I'm going to pulse these at a low wattage just to clean the gunk off. I don't want to burn the gunk off. I just want to heat these coils up enough to loosen that stuff up. That's hot. See the particles? Okay. I'm steam cleaning them now. Loosen up a little more junk. See the water boiling off?
Okay, I'm not trying to light up the room. Not putting on a pyrotechnic display. Just heating up coils. Isn't that ugly? Icky stuff. More gunk. So now you guys get the idea. I'm pulsing and glowing these. Yes, one is heating up faster than the other. I don't care. I'm not going to go and fix it right now. It's not the worst thing in the world. Ideally, they should fire the same, but if they don't, it's all right. I'll still get a good vape on it. Okay, so... That's basic routine maintenance on your coils. When should you do that? As often as you like. When the flavor starts to taste a little icky, they're probably all gunked up. What causes that gunk? That's residual juice flavoring and sweetener that gunks up on the coils. It's normal. And you clean them. You clean them. until there's no more gunk left on them. They should end up looking pretty damn close to new. And again, I would avoid excessively glowing these. It's not necessary, that's hot. It's hot enough. Now at this point, there's no more of that black gunky stuff on there. These coils look pretty healthy. Okay, see they're glowing? I don't need to light up the room, that's enough for me. Here's how I know when it's time to stop pulsing them. No more black gunk comes off. That stuff was all there before. Yeah, look at all that stuff in the bottom. So that's routine maintenance on your coils. It also is a lot easier because they're spaced coils, they're not contact coils. And let's wick it. So we're going to wick another one. You guys mind? We're getting pretty good at this. After a few times, you'll be a pro. Prepping my cotton, just pulling it out of there. Texas Tough is pretty good stuff, but it requires some break in. That Kendo, again, same thing, needs some break in. You gotta pulse the heat into it. That's good. That's enough. That's fine. See, I left it light, fluffy, wispy. That's even going to be too much. There's my wick. I know, some people are cringing right now because it's so fluffy. Yeah, that's right. I even have that fuzzy over there. It's one side. Good. And the other side. Because this one here that I just did that build and wick tutorial on, that's for a winner. Of that's, so I'm not going to vape that right now. So I want to show you this is the one that I'm going to actually vape. 
from the wicking in the video to vaping. That one's a little short and stubby. Okay. I'll borrow from that other side. It's okay. I'm not really worried about this top part at all. That I'm going to trim off. It's nice and fluffy. Boom, done. That's it. That's all it needs. This side over here, nice and fluffy. Boom, done. Okay, let's juice it. Today I'm going to be vaping and filling this tank with strawberry shortcake from the Hype Collection. This is propaganda e-liquid. This stuff is awesome. That was the ice cream bar that I got off the ice cream truck. Is, yeah, I'm trying to keep these fluffy. I'm not matting or packing them down. I want to get them to absorb, but I do not want dense cotton. If you pack that cotton down now, it's not going to wick right. It's going to choke out that flavor. So if you're using Kendo or Texas Tough or some other tougher, more like resilient type of cotton that isn't as absorbent that you have to really, you have to pulse, you have to pulse the juice into the coils. Like you really have to give them a little bit of heat. So if this was Kendo or Texas Tough, you'd put a little bit of juice on the coils, give them a pulse, a little more juice, give them a pulse, a little more juice, give them a pulse, until they start to turn translucent. So now that we know our cotton's all soaked, we can go ahead and put the tank back together. Yes, there's some water spots there. Okay, you should not have to squeeze or pinch the cotton this should go in very easily just like that if there's any cotton that you have to pack and push you did it wrong you used too much wow there really is a lot of water in there well oh well tough tough cookies now when you're going to top fill this tank you have to close those juice flow slow let's go ahead and fill this You don't want to let this sit too long. You want to get it filled and then you want to start vaping on it. Get those get that cotton heated up. Get those coils heating the cotton, wicking and swelling those fibers so it fills that slot. If you just leave this sitting around with the juice wicking slots open before firing it, there's more of a chance it's going to leak. Sometimes this, listen, if you did it wrong or it's a little loose, 
and it starts leaking, start hitting it at low wattage and get some heat into those fibers, get them, swell them up a little. It may, it may very well swell enough to stop the, the leaking. And then, you know, if you open it back up and you, and you pack more cotton in there, it may very well mute out your flavor. So let's see the moment of truth. Okay, so far so good. I don't see any leaking. Let me open up. Juice flow a little bit. I'm going to get some heat into those coils. Twenty five is not enough. Let's go with uh, fifty four watts. Okay, it's not leaking. Flavor's good. I think I'm all set. It's uh, going to have to go outside and create some cloud and fog to talk about this. Okay, so far so good. Now you've seen the close-up on this Heracles version 2 RTA. The build, the wick, it's not leaking. And I'm going to vape on it. 60 watts. Delicious. What was that? 60 watts. Delicious. I almost feel like that's not enough. Let's go to 70 watts. Fantastic. This is a pure, clean flavor. Very nice, a little airy. So you know what? Can close, can close the airflow a little bit. There's a little bit of a break-in period for the cotton. So just don't go gunning this thing up to 100 watts immediately. Start it out 40, 50, 60. Ramp it up 10 watts at a time. Find where you like to vape, where you like the flavor and intensity to be. If you build it like I showed you in my video, six wrap spaced Clapton's around a two and a half or three millimeter drill or post. They'll fit nice. You can vape that anywhere from 60 to 100 watts. Very nicely. All right, let me open up that airflow again. Go up, so that's 80 watts. Really nice. A really nice smooth vape, perfect flavor. It's wicking excellently. It's even better at 90. Even better at 90. That loose wicking allows the juice to flow, allows the flavor to flow. Let's go up to 100. 100 watts, no problem. Flavor's perfect. Vapor's very intense. The tank's a little bit warm now. Barely warm. The drip tip, cool as a cucumber. Plenty of airflow. Maybe even a little too much. So you can play around with the airflow. Again, I didn't have a problem with the V1. I like the V1, the way it vapes. That wicking method, all you do is tuck it into each one of the four instead of combining them into two. But this is definitely an improvement it definitely is. It's easier to wick now than it was. And those big airflow 
slots right underneath the coil. Really, really nice vape. Really nice vape. You're going to get a little sweat down at the bottom. You're going to get a little bit of juice sweat down there. What can I tell you? This is 100 watts vaping in an RTA. A little bit of juice is going to splatter down that airflow. Can't be helped. It's not something that needs to be solved. It comes with the territory if you're vaping with RTAs. Every RTA is going to have a little bit of sweat down at the bottom. It's not a problem. That's awesome. I'm going to go to 110. 110. Even better. That juice is just so nice and crisp. I get all the flavor profiles in that juice. This is a perfect vape. So with a little bit of effort, building your own coils, wicking properly, you get a fantastic vape. This is just as good as dripping. Just as good as dripping. And a six milliliter size capacity tank awesome it's intense it's as intense as you want it to be there's 120 watts starting to get vaped out a little bit even better the wicking is keeping up with the wattage that's very intense the airflow is keeping up with the wattage Go up to 130. You think we should? Let's go to 130. Can you see that? Notice I'm not taking five second hits and I don't need to. That's enough vapor production at 130. It's very intense. Surprisingly for 130 watts, it's not that hot of a vape. It's really not. It's warm, but I'm not getting any dry hits. It's keeping up. Very nice. 140. Let's go to 140. And you notice I'm talking in between and letting it re-wick. What's happening in there, as the coils heat up, there's enough space between those fibers to pull the juice and that heat is what's going to pull the juice in it's that space between the fibers that you need for that juice to boogie along the fibers heat up and they pull the juice along capillary action 150 watts let's go let's go to 150 okay i hope this is coming through usually when i'm outside it can't read the screen just it's a blur but please take my word for it that's 150 watts vape is getting a little hotter now it's still delicious flavor all right 160 and then I'm gonna stop 160 watts that's very intense it's a lot of flavor to experience. But the wicking is keeping up. Now I'm going to go to 180. I said I would stop. I'm feeling gutsy. That's hot. That's hot. But it's vapable. No dry hits. Let's max out 200 watts guys 200 watts I did it
That's a lot of vaping. I'm still getting perfect flavor. It can do it. Don't chain hit it at 200. Let it re-wick. Don't try and go for those five, six second hits. A half a second, a little sip. That's all you get at 200 watts. That's a little hot for my likes. But it did it. Let's go one more. So I'm, I'm maxed out on my Boss 3000, okay? From Vaporized Nomads. Isn't that nice? And they put my logo on there. Gorgeous mod, powerful mod, battery lasts all day. 200 watts. You see it? That's way too intense. I liked it at 100. I liked it a lot. Right at 100 watts. That's a more leisurely pace, more my style. The point is, if you wick it right, you can vape it any wattage you want. It's going to be a good vape at 50 watts. It's going to be a great vape at 70 to 80. It's going to be a superb vape at 100. For a very robust vaping experience, that's a great tank, great quality, nice improvement there. I feel like Sense really nailed it with this one. Um, what more can I say? Vaped it at 200 watts repeatedly. It held up, didn't burn, didn't dry hit, wicked perfectly. Um, the reason I did this whole long tutorial is because Sense asked me to do that for the Heracles. They asked me to do a wicking tutorial specifically for their tank because there weren't any on YouTube, so now there is. I know it's a long video. I thank you for watching this whole video. I hope it helped. Please comment down below what you like best about this RTA. Please comment down below positively about the wicking tutorial. Um, I'm going to do these frequently because if you're watching this video and you knew all of this and we're doing this already, then the video really doesn't apply to you. If you're watching this video and you're just getting into RTAs, then this video is hopefully very helpful. And I want you to enjoy the vaping experience that I'm enjoying right now. So if you want a chance to win the stainless steel with the M-Turk Clapton coils already pre-wicked for you, all you have to do is comment down below what you like best about this RTA. You have to give this video a thumbs up and I'm going to pick a winner at random in about three days. Somebody's going to be a lucky winner. Congratulations in advance to that person. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for?